To explore Colorado ski areas in a spatial context within a geographic information system or GIS, first navigate to the location where your Colorado ski areas data uh, is located. Then go ahead and double click on the Colorado ski areas MXD file which is a ArcMap document and it'll fire up your geographic information system, your GIS. So now like other uh, projects that we could look at in a GIS. We've got a series of, of toolbars on the top here, uh, various commands and things that we can do. We've got a whole series of data layers on the left side here, uh, ranging from cities to continental divide, and we'll look at those in a, in a minute. And then over here we've got our map. So the map part is the G part of GIS, and as we'll explain in a little bit, uh, we've got tables of information behind the map. Okay, so let's just start by looking at these different layers. For example, if I wanted to look at cities, even before we get into Colorado ski areas, let's get a sense of where cities are located, where the population is located in Colorado. Uh, right away I see that if I toggle cities on and off, I see that the eastern part of Colorado is mainly flat. It's the high plains. It's the Great Plains ecoregion of the United States. And it extends up until about the third of the way across from east to west across the state. If I turn the cities back on, I can see that most of the cities in Colorado are actually on the eastern plains. So most Coloradans are actually like the Kansans. We're, we're flatlanders. Uh, but as you can see over here in the western part of the state, there are some valleys that also have cities in them. One of the things that you could ask the students is, why are cities located where they are? What impact, what effect does terrain or elevation have on the location of cities? So if I zoom in over here to the western slope, I can see some cities nicely tucked away down in these valleys. I could also, if I right click on the, on the city's layer and go to label features, then I've got the cities labeled. So I can see, for example, that Grand Junction, Fruitvale, Clifton, etc. are over here in the in these valleys. Why aren't they located in higher elevations? You could discuss the reasons why with students. Now, sometime the students or you are going to be in this situation where you've got this sort of situation going on. I don't know where I am. You can always click on this globe full extent button to go back to the full extent of your data. Let's take a look at, let's turn off cities for the moment and take a look at rivers. One powerful thing you can do with this same data is to take a look at rivers. Why are rivers where they are? How, what is the influence of rivers uh, on the development of cities? What is the influence of rivers on river valleys? How do rivers form v river valleys? And the nesting relationship between rivers, I'm just going to click on the river symbol and then just bump up the width a little bit so I can see my rivers a little bit better. So I can see that, yeah, rivers and river valleys have a, a symbiotic relationship. I'm going to zoom back out to the whole state. I'm going to bump my rivers down to a width of one. And let's take a look at highways. If I look at highways in the state, highways also are constrained by the terrain. So if I look here at the valleys on the front range of Colorado, I can see that the highways actually go up the valleys. So for example, Interstate 70 west of Denver, it goes up Mount Vernon Canyon to the, to the foothills. It has to have a way to get up into the foothills. So you can discuss these kinds of relationships with the students and much more. So all of these things that we're doing so far are just to get a feel for the data. But not just a feel for where things are, but why they are where they are. That is the essence of spatial analysis with GIS.